Hi Troop 1910, uh, coming to you from my driveway. Uh, so I'm going to do the first of our videos that are demonstrating the different scout skills from your bag. The things that you're going to need for this are your tin foil, uh, your magnesium fire starter, your one of the small pieces of jute twine, one of the shims, and a scout knife. Um, and you're going to need a place outside, uh, preferably on a piece of cement or on a wood block, something that's not going to catch fire. Um, you can do it right on the ground if it's dry. All right, so here's, here goes the process. This tin foil is going to turn into your fire pan or your fire tray or your fire pit. Uh, so what I do is I just turn up the sides like this. And, and then turn up the ends and pinch them to create kind of like a little boat or a little tray here. Show you the kind of finished product once once I'm there. Ah, that one doesn't want to go. All right. So you end up with something that looks kind of like this. It's just a little tray. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm going to build my fire right in this little tray. I have it sitting up on a block just so it's up off the ground. Uh, next thing that I have to do is prepare all my materials. So I'm going to start by preparing my shim into three different sizes of wood. And so as I'm working, I want to collect all this stuff. So I want some very, very small stuff. So I'm cutting away from myself and I'm cutting some very, very small pieces and collecting them all up in a little pile. That's going to be my tinder. That's going to catch almost immediately. All right, my tinder is going to catch almost immediately. All right, and then I want some bigger, thicker pieces. So I dig in a little bit harder with my knife and I might be able to pull some little bit bigger pieces off, right? As you're working, you might find that sometimes you're trying to get kindling, sometimes you're trying to get tinder, and other pieces drop off. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to end up with three different piles. I'm going to move all these out of the way for a minute because I had prepared this ahead of time so you didn't have to watch me work on all that. So what I have here is I have a little tray that's got all my different uh, sizes of wood. So this is my middle group right here. This would be my kindling. This is my fuel wood. They're bigger chunks of wood. They're just kind of bigger chunks of wood. They'll burn for a little bit longer. And I actually have two small piles, two piles of tinder, uh, because what happens is I want to get one going at the start, and then if I start to lose my fire, I can put that other pile in there and it'll start up again. All right, so I have my wood prepared. Next thing I have to prepare is my tinder that's going to start my fire. Uh, one of these magnesium fire starters is very difficult to get to strike onto wood. If you've tried to strike wood, you have to make it so it's fine, like powder. Um, it's possible, but it's a little bit easier with, uh, with something that's already a small fiber. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the four strands apart. I took the four strands apart, and I'm just going to work on one at a time. I'm going to twist it to make it release all the fibers so that I end up with just a real fuzzy, just a real fuzzy mess. All right, the softer and more fibrous I can make this, the lighter I can make it, almost like see-through. I'll just do one. I'm gonna pull those fibers apart over and over and over. It gets fluffier and fluffier. Ends up just like a little hairball. I'm gonna tuck that in the corner because I don't want it to blow away in the wind. And I'm gonna do the next one. So I'm gonna do all four of these the same way. It's very important that I pull these tinders apart, or sorry, pull the fibers apart to make good tinder. The more I pull those fibers apart, the better that's gonna catch. Put that with the other one, the easier that's gonna catch with my flint and steel. Pull those last two apart. So I know you're like, oh, do it faster, Mr. Biter, but the whole idea of this is if I try to go too fast, if I try to do any of these steps too quickly, I pay for it in the long run. I've started a lot of fires and had and, and, and lost them somewhere along the way. Lost the flame somewhere along the way before it really got going. And it was usually because I didn't do enough preparation at the start. I didn't prepare enough fuel wood. I didn't prepare enough kindling or tinder to keep a fire going. So now I have all four of those strands, and now it's a pretty decent size fluff ball. I'm gonna tear it apart, put it back together, tear it apart, put it back together. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to release the ends of those fibers. That's what's gonna catch that, that little spark. 
All right, so I got a nice little ball. I'm gonna tuck it in the corner here so it's a little bit out of the wind. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna take my uh, my fire starter and I can't work with it with the little chain on here like this, so I'm gonna take the little chain off. It just kinda comes off like that. Set that aside, I'll put that back together later on. And I wanna practice doing my, doing my sparking. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this, this is the striker, and I'm trying to put it on the ferrocium rod, the black part. And I'm gonna set it on there like this, and then I'm gonna tilt it down a little bit in the direction that I wanna scrape it. So I'm almost like petting it. But obviously it's not very much like petting because you're scraping it or scratching it. So we wanna get those, those, those sparks to fly off of there, okay? I'm not doing that toward here because I was just practicing. Uh, this whole block is made out of magnesium. Magnesium is a, is a metal that when you scrape it down in, into little fibers, it can catch a spark really easily and it burns at something like 4,000 degrees or something crazy for a very short amount of time. So what the reason why we have this block is we can scrape a bunch of this magnesium down into our pile, down into our tinder pile, and that'll help once that fire, once that, that spark catches, it's gonna help it to be much hotter so that it can catch on on the rest of our wood. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time and just scrape using sort of the little teeth. It almost looks like a hacksaw blade or something like that. Scrape a bunch of these little pieces of magnesium. It's almost like I'm whittling but instead of having it like this, I'm have it like this, so I'm scraping it just like I will when I get to, when I get to using the ferrocium rod on the other side. So I have a whole bunch of this collected right into my tinder. I can see all these little silver sparkles in my tinder. Ready to go there. Last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of that shim. That was our old one. I'm gonna take one of my piles, one of my small piles, just take a few of it, not the whole thing, just a little bit of it. I'm gonna pile it on top so that as soon as that tinder catches, it's gonna immediately start throwing heat toward those very small sticks and hopefully that'll catch quickly. My goal is to keep a fire going small for as long as I possibly can. All right, so here we go. Once again, I'm trying to lay this down so then I'm getting a good spark like that and it throws it right into the pile, right? First shot. Caught my wood right away. Now my job is to start laying other little pieces of wood in there. All right. So the goal is to get this to last two minutes. I don't know how long I'll be able to keep this going today. Depend on my wind a little bit. And, hmm. Make sure I'm adding sticks onto the top of my top of my flame. I don't want to add too quick because if I throw it all in there right now, it'll make a big fire and it'll be out almost immediately. So I'm just adding little bits as we go, three or four sticks at a time. Ooh, the wind's coming in. I want to protect my fire just a little bit. I have a little bit more of that tinder in my hand, so I want to hold that off just in case I have to get this thing going. I'm gonna add some of my bigger sticks now because I have enough heat to be able to... Ooh, fire is starting to go out, so I add a little bit of tinder. It'll come right back. I'll get some of those bigger pieces in and then I won't have to add quite so quickly. They'll take a little bit longer to burn through. And then I have a little bit of a fire to work with here, right? While I'm waiting a few minutes, I think I... Got some tiny little marshmallows for my tiny little fire. I got some tiny little marshmallows. Oh yeah. So you can see how the bigger stuff, it'll last a little bit longer. I want to always make sure that I'm watching my fire and tending it though. Then we'll walk away. Mm, starting, to, starting to die out a little bit, so I'm going to put some more medium stuff on.
I'm gonna put a few more of the heavier pieces on there. Maybe they'll burn for a little bit longer. I'm trying to build it kind of just in one little contained area. Oh, one of my sticks got away. Try to get that in there. Here we go. Now they're catching a little bit more. So again, it's just one shim's worth of wood. You're trying to make it last as long as you can. Be an efficient fire starter and a fire user. So my, I've almost lost my flame. So I put some more, a little bit, little bit of small stuff in there, make sure it's got enough air to keep going. That's why I keep a little bit more of this small stuff handy all the time and I do that with regular fires too as I always keep tinder handy. Tinder and some small kindling ready just in case your fire ever starts dying on you. you add a little bit more. Now everything when you're working with a miniature fire everything goes faster. The wood burns through a lot faster, it dies down quicker, it flares up faster. It's kind of like working in, in fast motion which gives you a chance to, to practice something that might take you know, an hour to have a full fire, or two hours that you would have a campfire, right? You can practice this in five or 10 minutes and then shut it down, uh, you know, cool it off, uh, make sure it's out completely and then practice it again. Gives you a chance to practice this over and over and over. So I gave you enough material to do this three times. I got a couple of really thick sticks in here. I think I'm basically gonna put all the rest in. I'll do one more marshmallow. Well, I have enough heat to do it. I saved one of my one of my pieces of wood. I'll burn this one at the end. Toast up that marshmallow. I want it to catch on fire. Oh, perfect. Look at that. Look at that toasted marshmallow. I'm just gonna put the rest of my wood in. Now I'm gonna burn my my toasting stick. <laughs> that was it. I think that's all my wood that I had left. A little bit more that I had. Just... Now I'm out of wood. So now I can just make sure it's staying safe. Make sure that at the end of this I don't just walk away. But when I get completely done, that, that foil pan's gonna be a little bit charred, but you can use it over and over. Again, just make sure it completely cools off. That foil pan will be incredibly hot once, uh, once I've used it. Um, I'm down to just the last little bit of fire here left. Last couple little flames here. Just about out, but I'm down to pretty much just ashes. So the idea is that at the end of it, you don't want to have a pile of wood. You want to have a pile of ashes, just like in a real fire pit. You're hoping to finish it up and then have just ashes at the end. Make sure that at the end, you don't just leave this somewhere. Uh, you don't want to be littering. You don't want it to blow away. Let it cool down for a little while. Clean it out real good. Just you know, dump it, uh, dump it out into a flower bed or somewhere like that, and then. Uh, and then reuse your fire pan. Have a good one, 1910. Have fun practicing.